Welcome to the Sci-Fi Express lane. I'm actually in Sci-Fi Express traffic. I'm not going anywhere, but it's just because I'm approaching the intersection of a highway. So anyway, this one I want to talk about kind of what it means to be a pioneer. Not really what it means to be a pioneer, but what it means to be pioneering something. What it means when something is being pioneered, right? What is being pioneered? Um, recently, or this year, I got two awards. One from the East Coast Black Age of Comic Books, ECBOC, which is the oldest black comic book convention in the world, okay? Not just America, shoot, the world. And um, they gave me a Pioneer Award. Um, I thank the brothers for, for, for recognizing me. Brothers and sisters, you know, um, for recognizing me being a pioneer of black science fiction. And um, this past May, or I just got the award in June, I got an award from the Miami International Science Fiction Film Festival for being a pioneer of science fiction, a black science fiction. And I'm like, wow, that's two pioneer awards. And I still, and I'm still trying to, you know, get put on, right? Trying to, you know, build on my catalog. So um, I recently was talking to somebody in preparation for Florida Supercon. And we were talking about horror horror and black people and I told him I said yo you got to see this movie The Blackening you know I've done videos on it and I mentioned it in probably two or three other videos um, but I want to mention it in a different way I told him I said you know we love horror and um, we love you know black people expanding and while we've had black people in horror films before we had uh, scary movie. We had Meet the Blacks. Um, we even had Get Out, right? But what the blackening does is it's pioneering black characters in a different type of horror movie. It's not like Medea Boo. It's not like Scary Movie. And then also, it's not like Us. It's not like Get Out. It is breaking new ice. We've seen, you know, uh, like I was trying to tell him, I was like, you know, you can't fault it for the jokes working, but it's not a comedy. You know, as much as Chucky was a serious character, he was joking throughout the whole thing, but it wasn't a comedy. The movie The Leprechaun, that wasn't a comedy but it was a lot of joking, a lot of jokes in it. It's just that for me, Chucky is corny, okay? Chucky may have a lot of jokes in him, but for the most part, his jokes weren't working. We there, when, when you go back and you think about Friday the 13th, Freddy, um, Nightmare on Elm Street, there's comedy in them. I felt there was a lot of comedy in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I just don't think it was extra funny, but it was comedy nonetheless. And um, because the jokes work in black, the blackening doesn't make it a comedy, okay? Um, it could be a soft comedy. I, I agree they had probably more jokes than um, Freddy Krueger, but you know, I don't think it's enough to bill it as a comedy. I think it's still, you know, it it's still what do you call it? Retains the the horror element, and I think for that it is pioneering something that we've never seen before. We've never seen it in a black package. We've seen the Leprechaun. We've seen Chucky. We've seen Gremlins. We've seen all of these horror movies with 
humor in them, but they probably are not considered comedies because the humor didn't really work. You know, I was telling my friend, he was, he was talking to me about, you know, an example of, of, of you know, how a black guy is going to react as opposed, opposed to a white guy. And that's different. That's a whole different thing. Yeah, characters act differently. They may say different things because they're black. No doubt. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the whole energy, the timing of it. Like, for instance, there was a scene in a Friday the 13th movie. I'm going to say Friday the 13th 3 or 4, he was in the city. And um, a guy had, he caught a dude on the roof. And the dude decided to box him. You know, black guy too. And he punched Jason in the head. Punched him again. Pow! And um, it it wouldn't, wouldn't budge him. And then, you know, he gave, he backed Jason up a little bit, but Jason still was taking the punches, pow, pow, you know, like the zombie he is. And um, Jason decided he'd had enough. And the dude was, you know, like giving out. He was like, damn, what's wrong with this guy? And I hit him with everything I got. You know, I'm punched out. It was a short couple of punches, but he had, he had reevaluated himself. And, um, Jason then punched him one time so hard that the dude's head flew off his body down the building, bounced off different things as it came to the bottom of the building or to the ground. And to me, that's them trying to be funny. I felt it was funny. It wasn't funny because I laughed at it. It was funny because they was trying to make it funny and the joke worked. And there's a lot of examples of that in, um, what do you call it? In, um, um, what do you, um, in Freddy and, and Jason movies. But a lot of times people don't recognize them as being funny. So they don't get held to the same standards because the jokes don't always work. Freddy Krueger tells a lot of jokes. Heck, there was a lot of jokes in Freddy vs. Jason, which I feel is one of my favorite movies. So, I personally feel, I'm giving an example of blackening, and then I'll go back to my topic, that um, the blackening is pioneering something that we will see more of because we haven't seen a lot of it before. And that is humor in a horror movie with black people. We've seen Get Out. We've seen comedy horrors like Scary Movie and Medea Boo and Meet the Blacks. But we haven't seen it maintain its horror element. Um, I've seen horror movies where um, they were you know, very serious, you know, they were going for the nun, they were going for Annabelle, they were going for all these other ones that don't really have any comedy at all, and I respect those, those, you know, but that's a different genre, that's a different division of horror, there are horrors that have humor and comedy in them, and for black people, that is something that is new to us, matter of fact, all of them are new to us, and um, we're working ourselves out to, um, to uh, what do you call it, to be able to have films and um, um, uh, product in all of these different types of sub-genres. So it is, it is growing on us. And there's nothing wrong with us having things that are pioneers. Um, when I talk to people about black horror. A lot of the people were saying, oh, well, you know, I never, I don't really like horror movies. I don't really like um, what they do. And I said, well, we represent a different expression of horror. And and um, you will see that as we start to do more of it, when you see things like The Boy, when you see things like Megan, and my favorite um, um, Malignant 
you'll start to see the energy of modern horror and humor in it because it's funny as I mean as horrorful and petrifying as the boy is and creepy as it tries to be it's not as creepy as it could be and um, there are a lot of elements in it that are stoking the comedy um, of the story and of course I believe Malignant had humor in it although it maintained its horror element. I don't think you have to go as far as um, Cocaine Bear, which is over the top with it. And I don't even think Cocaine Bear was, was a horror story at all. Um, Tremors and some of the other uh, B-movie type feels, I don't think they were comedy, but I do think some of them depended on it. So I, that, that's really you know what it is. I think when you're pioneering something as a person and you're the pioneer, sometimes people won't get it and it will feel like it's not something else and they will compare it to what it isn't. And then as more examples of what it is start to come out, then people will understand what it means to be different. Now, I think you sacrifice a little bit because it depends on how fast it takes on. You may not have a large group. Like when I did my first movie, Holla If I Kill You, it was in 2003. You know, um, I didn't, there wasn't silliness in it. It wasn't Meet the Blacks. It wasn't um, Scary Movie. You know, we had jokes in it. And I had a bunch of comedians, but they weren't, you know, running around silly comedians. They weren't doing wild, over-the-top stuff. They weren't doing slapstick. And I don't even think my comedians, you know, if I'd have went to Mike Yard and said, yo, let's do slapstick, he would have been like, yo, see you later. I don't think John Laster, I don't, I don't, I don't, well, John Laster wasn't in Holland. He was in Gold Digger Killer. But I don't think Kareem would have done it. I don't think Will would have done it. I damn sure don't think Brooklyn Mike would have done it. He might have tried it because this was years ago. He was a lot younger. So he might have tried it. But no, we're not doing slapstick. So um, to even compare, like I remember trying to describe to people what the blackening was. I couldn't really compare it to anything because it was in nothing, not many things that were like it. You know what I'm saying? So the Chucky, the Leprechaun, those comparisons are there, but it's just like um, when I say the Flash, right? Okay, I saw the Flash. And um, the, the Flash, my son and I compared it to Black Adam, okay? The movie starring The Rock that came out last year in November 2022, right? The Rock was the best thing in the movie. The giant dude and all the other characters were straight trash to me and my son. The Rock, even the story, him being a slave, trash. But The Rock, his lines, his, his presence made the movie, right? Flip that to the, to the Flash. Everything around The Flash was hot. Batman stole the movie because he was better in Batman. Um, he was better in The Flash than he was better in, than he was in his own movie, Batman. Okay, Michael Keaton, he, he he did his thing. But the um, Wonder Woman, her little cameo wasn't bad. Uh, Supergirl, psh, and then Zod, the villain, he was himself. And he brought that energy there and just the, the whole world, the special effects. But what was corny was Ezra as an actor playing this stupid kid Flash, playing this stupid uh, dumb kid that he goes back in time and sees an alternate reality, all that stuff, that was trash. So you put The Rock in Flash and now you got an A movie. You put Ezra in Black Adam and the movie's trash because of the actor, their lines, the main central character, whatever. So that's how I see um, some of these horror movies. So if you were to put the humor writers from Blackening, the Blackening in Chucky, it's a different movie. And that's what I'm trying to make. So when I, you know, um, 
talk, you know, people talk about me being a pioneer. Yeah, I have to celebrate what I try to do, what I've been doing, because now I have examples of it. But when you're pioneering something, you don't really have examples. And black science fiction as a whole is still being pioneered. We started with Sword and Soul, we had some paranormal stories, but now we have post-apocalypse, now we have zombies. It's more than just the Harlem Shake, it's more than just Rashida the Zombie Killer. We have space stories, we have subcategories in it. You understand? I'm still doing, you know, um, we got cyberpunk, but I'm still doing pirates. Now it's really hard to find something that we're not doing because we're doing so many of things. So anyway, that's what it is to be a pioneer and that's what it is for something to be pioneering. Um, thank you. Uh, again, this is Sci-Fi Express Lane. My name is Jeff Carroll. Um, like, subscribe, share, and of course, talk back, comment. Deuces. I'm out.